pouring money into financial institutions and not and what 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 happened when they did that which he, they which they should have never done is that they became enmeshed in something else they shouldn't have done and that is helping other corporations such as General Electric and AIG which is an insurance company or was I should say and um now they're into Chrysler and General Motors and the Chrysler situation Chrysler hasn't made money for years they should have been shut down years ago the shareholders should have lost their money the bondholders should have picked up whatever they could and uh the assets should have been sold off to the highest bidder i mean that's the way the american system of bankruptcy works the government's not supposed to go in there and give 55% of the company to a labor union and uh then they get an earn in from fiat to get them 51% uh money injection by the us government again 8.2 billion that's 8% of the company and uh then 2% of the company to the canadian and ontario governments for putting 2.4 billion in and on and on and on this what we just did in the last election is we traded a fascist for a communist and this has been a seamless uh transfer of government and team a went in for team b or vice versa and they all belong to the council on foreign relations the trilateral commission the bilderberger group etc cetera, etc cetera. and there is no change and they're trying to save ostensibly save a system that's been ravaged ever since 1971 by a bunch of crooks i spent 28 years in, in wall street i know what it's all about i know how they cut corners the sec looks the other way and only bothers the little firms the little brokers who can't defend themselves and uh, newsletter writers for that matter and they don't go after the big guys the madoffs who steal 100 billion dollars and have private trials and spend a month and a half we still don't know how long he's going to spend in jail i mean that's one long contemplation and by doing what they did with him he didn't have to give up the other 100 or 200 people who were involved in the scam including the central intelligence agency and the Mossad and the Israeli government our government stinks they're just a bunch of crooks and so i'm going to ask these questions to uh former congressman nay or nay however he pronounces it i'm going to be in this program here in in a week or two i'm going to ask him uh, is it as corrupt as i think it is he just spent 17 months in jail <coughs> for being part of the abra abramoff scam and uh and so uh, it'll be interesting to see what he has to say to me because uh he knows i don't pull any punches that's probably why he's ha- he's going to have me on there but that's the state of our government and it is tragic for every american to know that the corruption is what it is how do you stop it well number 1 you stop campaign contributions number 2 you stop lobbyists no more and every congressman or someone who wants to run for congress or senate they all get the same amount of money from the government to run if they decide uh, every congressman needs uh, 5 million dollars to to run his campaign well they'll all get that 5 million dollars from the government then they won't be influenced by people from the outside and you know at least that's a start and of course congressmen don't want that because they like getting paid off I have an idea here from West Virginia do you really think that we could turn that we can turn the government around 
Well, Ron Paul has a bill up to essentially audit the Federal Reserve. And I think, you know, it's got 156 sponsors. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think it probably will could be defeated, you know, if the bankers and others are willing to spend enough money. And what will the price tag be? Probably the same as NAFTA when I bought Congress on NAFTA. And uh, it'll probably cost about maybe $20, $30 billion. And, but they'll buy them all off. And uh, will they stay bought? Who knows? The American public has been stupid because they, you know, they return 94% of the incumbents, most of whom are crooks. Uh, Nay or Nye was just one of the ones that got caught. I mean, they all do it. Not all of them, but most of them. Anyway, if, if this uh, Federal Reserve bill uh, is going to be very interesting because if the groundswell in Congress continues, uh, they could get 250 people in the House to vote for that. I, I don't know how many people are in the House, Drew. Do you know? Yeah, 435. Well, uh, 435 Congress. Like, and so what, 200 and... 225 would be certainly sufficient to carry the bill. So, you know, it's got a shot, but, you know, the, the, the first thing we have to do to save what we've got left is to get rid of the Federal Reserve. And number two, to erect trade barriers, put tariffs on goods and services coming into the United States. Extraordinarily important. And I'm the only newsletter writer in the world, the only commentator who even talks about it. I mean, they all think I'm crazy. And, you know, America has had tariffs since 17... No, since 1800. They didn't have tar tariffs between 1790 and 1800. Uh, and they almost destroyed the country, incidentally. Uh, the old British mercantilism, which is now tra called free trade and globalization. And we've had them since then, and they work great. I mean, you produce a, uh, a car in China uh, for, say, $15,000. And you sell it in the United States for $20,000. But the same car made in the United States would cost 20000 So for every car that the Chinese sell in America, they have to pay $5,000 to the federal government in a tariff duty. That money goes to offset the budget deficit and other things. And so we did that for a long, long time, almost 200 years. Now, what's so bad about that? There's nothing bad about it. People have been conditioned. Congress has been bought and paid for. And what's going to happen, to answer the question, is that if something like this does not happen, there will be revolution in the United States. It's as simple as that. And if these people on Wall Street and in banking and insurance and all these kinds of industry think they're going to get away with what they got away with, they're mistaken. Because we're not going to have a court system at that time that's going to be politically correct or cover up for the Illuminists who have been running everything from behind the scenes in our government for the last hundred years. It's going to come to an end. And they will go to jail for the treason, the things that they've done, and the illegal things that they've done to our country. And I only hope that we can get them to court before the mob tears them to pieces. You know, during the French Revolution... Madame Defarge picked out 300,000 people who Robespierre promptly cut their heads off. And it could come to that. So all you fat bankers on Wall Street, I think you ought to reconsider what you're doing. Uh, you get the American people mad and they ain't going to stop.